I, 36 male, don't get along with my brother-in-law, 30 sister's husband, for several reasons. He's a brutally honest guy who says what's on his mind without hesitation. My sister and I grew up very close, but her husband doesn't like it. He even accused me of being in love with her. And his logic is that I help take care of my nephews. So in his rational mind, the fact that I enjoy helping take care of my nephews means I'm in love with their mother. Go figure. He used to joke about mine and my wife's infertility with comments like, Are you guys pregnant yet? You guys are pushing 40. You gotta hurry up and make some grandchildren. Or my favorite, maybe you guys can't have kids because you're both men. It's insulting, but the family says he's like this with everyone, so it's not personal. Whenever my wife and I had a celebration, say a birthday or an anniversary, my brother-in-law would use it as a chance to talk about his kids getting A+, or winning a game, or even talk about an ultrasound appointment and turn it into his celebration. You could see how frustrating that is. So I've kept my distance, but I see my sister and nephews regularly. Days ago, my brother-in-law's 30th birthday, he called me saying he wanted me to be there to share his joy with family. I apologized and said no, but he kept pressuring me, saying he had a surprise for my wife and me. I knew he was up to no good, probably some brutal honesty. Finally, he said, don't forget my gift. I was lost thinking of what I should give him based on his behavior for the past year. The family was there, and my brother-in-law already started asking if my wife and I had something to announce. My wife froze, and then he said, ha ha ha, that's what I thought. My wife got upset and left early. When it was time for gift opening, I gave him the gift I bought, and once he opened it, he was shocked. The gift was a book about narcissism called Why Is It Always About You? He looked at me, shocked, and I said, it's a good read, trust me. Everyone kept staring, and he got so upset and stormed off to the bathroom. My sister followed, and I heard him yell in the bathroom. I said, well, I'd better go. But my parents went off on me, calling me disrespectful, mean, and rude for this tasteless, insulting gift. I tried to point out that this was the outcome of how he's been treating my wife, who left earlier, and me, and they don't even notice her. They kept arguing, saying he was just teasing us, and that I was out of line to just say he was a narcissist. Then I left. Mom kept calling to say I messed up and ruined this man's birthday and should apologize to him profusely or not be surprised if I couldn't see my sister and nephews again, which made me upset because I adore my nephew so much. It's been days and things have been tense between us. I miss my nephews and I'm thinking of apologizing for what I did. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot. He's allowed to make hurtful jokes, but you can't? Honestly, in my opinion, that gift is harmless. There are two ways a narcissist will react to being called a narcissist. They will agree or they will blow up. He did the latter. He upset your wife with another joke about infertility, but buying him a stupid book is crossing the line? What is wrong with the OP's parents, too? They're pathetic. I would maybe talk to your sister privately about his behavior and why you bought that gift. Not the idiot. You might want to reconsider your relationship with your parents and your sister if they continue to support someone so deliberately hurtful to you and your wife. An entitled idiot like your brother-in-law can dish it out but not take it. Unfortunately, since it seems no one will tell him he got what he deserved, he will bounce back to his crap soon. Have a few pithy words with your parents. If they hold their swampy ground, then reduce or eliminate contact. Their support of brother-in-law's cruelty to your wife should not be tolerated, and you should have done this years ago. You are the idiot. You lured yourself to your brother-in-law's level and also openly humiliated him. You didn't have to go, but you also didn't have to give him the gift either. You could have left it on the table when you left or dropped it on the front porch if you really needed him to get the message. But I'm confused. Why didn't you leave with your wife when she was so upset? Why did you instead stay at a party that you didn't even want to be at? Was it so you could see that he opened the book in front of everyone? It was petty, and I'm here for that. Enough with people here calling you the idiot for not being the bigger person. Screw all of that. Sink to his level. Let him feel the sting of humiliation. He actively insults you and hurts your wife and then cries victim? No, no. Honestly, 
This also seems like a reflection of how your entire family values you. He's been abusing you and your wife for years. So you finally put him in his place after he literally just insulted you guys again and rubbed salt in a wound and they're mad at you? I'm sorry your family sucks. We have a three-month-old baby and it's been exhausting. I work early mornings from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. Since my wife works part-time from 11 to 4, I need to pick my daughter up from the sitter and take her home, make dinner and clean up. It's all still new and don't get me wrong, I love my daughter, but it started to feel like I'm doing most everything and my wife told me she knows that and she'll try to do more. I told her just as long as she does night shifts, it's fine. I do them myself, but being sleep deprived is a huge safety risk where I work, considering I operate heavy machinery. Since I started going back to work, it's been an ongoing issue whenever my daughter wakes up. Either my wife takes forever because I have to push her to get up, or she asks me to do it knowing I have to be up in a couple of hours for work. On average, my daughter wakes up three to four times a night and she's in the room with us in her bassinet because we wanted to wait a little longer before having her in her room. Unfortunately, coffee doesn't have the same effect, so I'm beyond tired. We've talked about this, and she promises she'll do nights, but once it's actually time, it's a different story. Around midnight, my daughter was crying, and I woke my wife so she could feed her. Again, she mumbles in her sleep that I do it. I'm fed up. First, I fed my daughter and got her back to sleep. Then I grabbed my pillow to sleep in the guest room. My wife was angry when my daughter started crying again three hours later, and I was not there. She thinks I'm absolutely childish now, leaving her to sleep alone over something so small, and it's not fair for me to sleep elsewhere just to get away from the crying. So now she says I'm not a supportive spouse for her and pretty much an idiot with not wanting to sleep in the same room for the past two nights. She says it's like I'm leaving her alone to handle our daughter, and I need to be involved too. I'm at the point where I just wanted to do something to fix the sleeping issue, but I don't know if it was being an idiot or not. Not the idiot. Your wife keeps promising but does not do what she says she'll do. She's mad because you have called her on it, and by sleeping in the guest room, are forcing her to do what she said she would do. Notice she is making this all about her. Your wife needs to put her big girl pants on and take on her responsibilities. Everyone's the idiot here. Waking up every three hours and staying up for 30 to 45 minutes and repeating three times every night literally feels like torture. Your wife should not be solely responsible for this. You need to do some of it too. This is one of those situations that may have been planned with the best of intentions, but when reality strikes and you discover how physically and mentally hard it is for one person, you should adjust. If you each took one nighttime feeding, you can ensure that you both get one six-hour stretch of uninterrupted sleep, which would leave you both in a much better place physically and mentally. You're both parents. You both need to chip in on the nasty part of being a new parent. I-23 recently gave birth to twin girls when I found out my husband, 34, has a teenage daughter. I am very active on social media and post cute photos of my twins on there. My husband's daughter, let's call her Sophia, happened to find my account. She messaged, saying that she's my husband's daughter and that she found my account when I was still pregnant with my twins, that she has been too shy to message me, but has finally found the courage and is wondering if she could meet her new baby sister someday. I, of course, was a little freaked out because I never heard of my husband having any other children. So I asked her a bunch of questions and if she had any proof that her claims were true. She provided a birth certificate with my husband's name and signature and a photo of a younger version of my husband holding a baby. When I brought Sophia up to my husband, he denied everything for about 10 minutes of our argument until he finally admitted it and said he had signed away full custody and didn't want anything to do with her. That broke my heart because I grew up without a father and I knew how much pain it caused me. I asked my husband to please just let Sophia see her sisters, that my children deserve to be able to know their biological sister. He refused and said that what they don't know won't hurt them. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and invited Sophia over when her dad wasn't home. She had a great time meeting them. I made her some tacos, which he told me was her favorite food. We enjoyed the time spent together as a family. 
My husband found out because Sophia posted some pictures of herself with her little sisters, and my husband saw them, so he follows her with a fake account. He got furious at me and claimed that I betrayed him, called his daughter a witch, and said that she was a mistake and was never supposed to be born, that he was young and immature when he had her, and he just wants to forget that part of his life. I feel like she's a human being and deserves to know this side of her family. It isn't fair to her that she was forgotten about or just buried in the past. I want my daughters to be a part of Sophia's life. Sophia seems like a good person and means well. I felt as if I made her day. Am I the idiot for inviting my husband's daughter over? Wait, your husband stalks via an alternate account, the social media of a daughter he never disclosed to you? and claimed he doesn't want anything to do with? And then he blames her for being born? There are a lot of problems here, but inviting your husband's daughter over is not one of them. You are not the idiot, OP. OP isn't an idiot to anyone in this situation. Still, in general, she's a huge idiot to herself by marrying and having kids with a man 11 years her senior who has anger issues, lies about having other children, and calls his own daughter a witch. Hopefully this is the hint that finally gets OP to run like the wind. But given she's just had children with this guy, it may be too late at this point. He wants nothing to do with her, but follows her with a fake account? You handled that situation a lot better than most women would. I think it's lovely you opened up to her. Your husband needs to grow up and accept his daughter happened. It's heartbreaking. She probably feels completely rejected by her father. You are not the idiot. He might have given up parental rights, but that does not mean you should stop acting like an adult, a parent, and a good person. This child does not need to suffer at the hands of someone who is still not acting like a good citizen in our modern society. His parental rights mean he cannot make legal decisions or request time with her. It did not give him the right to act like the tool he is being. Well, I, 33 female, have been waiting seven years for a baby. I've had six heartbreaking losses and a lot of failed IVF. So when I found out I was pregnant this time around, I didn't celebrate till I was eight months pregnant for obvious reasons. My husband said we'd hold a baby shower with a gender reveal as a party game, but the only rule was that neither of us would pop the balloons till 8 p.m. If this isn't obvious, we held two different parties, one for each of our friends and family, but we would meet at my party at 10 p.m. You could imagine my shock when a lot of his side especially his mother and sister, 25, ended up at my baby shower. At first, I felt extremely happy and proud that they came. Everything was going well. Even his sister, who usually makes herself the main character, was having a good time. That was until it came to find out the gender. I know people will have comments about gender reveals being cheesy, but since we have everything bought for our babies, even the names picked out, realistically, it was only a game that if you guessed right, you'd win a bottle of wine or a bath set. We don't care about gender. We both just wanted the whole pregnancy experience. Well, at 8 p.m., my sister-in-law comes in with the balloons, saying my hubby put mother-in-law in charge of them. Well, okay, let's pop these balloons. Are ready to move on to the name game. The confetti came out rainbow. My sister-in-law took center stage and went on a long rant about how we were trash for holding a gender reveal. Mid-speech, I told her to get out, and when mother-in-law told me she was right, and it was her brother's, my husband's home, so she had a right to be here, I told her to get out too, since she probably knew she was going to do this. My husband's grandmother started ringing him about the situation, and his cousins and aunts started telling them to leave. My sister-in-law was in mid-panic attack, and my mother-in-law was crying when they left my house. My husband arrived about 10 minutes later, and his grandmother, aunts, cousins told him the situation. So my husband just said, screw them, we are having two beautiful daughters, but I'd rather change one of their names to my granny's instead of my mother's. His dad and a few family members left after that because they said I was a monster for what I did to sister-in-law when I knew her issues, and my husband took it too far with changing the baby's name. Not the idiot. I have my own opinion about gender reveals, but the time to display that opinion is not by hijacking someone's party and giving a speech. What in the world? To destroy your baby shower for some sick kind of social grandstanding is foul behavior. You are not a monster for getting excited about your babies, ever.
Of course not the idiot. Sister-in-law and mother-in-law planned to ruin a happy moment, and her horrid actions resulted in her having a panic attack response. That's a personal problem. I love how enablers can say that the offended party went too far, but not the person who went out of their way to be horrible, rude, and hurtful. You ignored that your sister-in-law had a panic attack. She wouldn't be having a panic attack if she hadn't done something worthy of being asked to leave. Don't start none, won't be none. My wife and I have three children together. The oldest is 22 and the middle 20. They're not relevant to the story. My youngest, Martin, is 18 years old. My wife and I always wanted three children. After the second, I foolishly told my brother that I wanted the third child to be a girl. He couldn't keep his mouth shut, so he told my sister-in-law and she told my wife. My wife was very upset and said I was pressuring her to have a girl, which was never my intention. We went to marriage counseling and everything was fine after that. Now she has the worst habit of telling Martin that I don't want him when she's mad at him. This started when Martin was a kid. I have had conversations with her several times about this, and we separated for almost a year and a half over this very problem. Finally, I agreed to reconcile when she showed me proof that she went to therapy for her behavior. Martin really has no problem with his mother saying this. I explained to him that I made the silly mistake of telling my brother that I expected a certain gender, but that this doesn't mean that I didn't love him or prefer someone else to be my child. He understood, and now it's like an inside joke between us. Today when I got home, my wife was yelling at Martin because he had failed a class. She said something like, that's why your dad didn't want you. I yelled at her that I was done with her behavior and that she was by far a worse parent than me because at least I care about Martin. She yelled at me that this was my fault because I was the one who didn't love Martin and I was the one that instilled that idea in her. I told Martin to make a little travel bag because we would stay with my sister for a while. My phone is now full of messages from her family saying it's my fault that my wife thinks I don't love Martin because I was the one who said I wanted Martin to be a girl. They also said that taking Martin from his mother is horrible and that I should be ashamed for not being a man and running away from my problems. What is wrong with your wife's family? Are you seriously kidding here? You end up in counseling because you said you'd like your next child to be a girl? Your wife ends up in therapy because she's telling her own son that his father doesn't love him? Your wife's family thinks you're an idiot because you're protecting your own son from this kind of toxicity. Trust me, dudes, you are not the idiot in any way. Keep protecting that boy. Um, since when? has having a gender preference equated to not wanting the child, period. Tons of people hope to have a certain gender when they're pregnant. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe your wife has secretly been resentful about having three boys and is pinning that on you because she can't deal with her disappointment from it. In any case, not the idiot. Never cool to put that kind of emotional abuse on children. For real, gender disappointment is such a common thing, but it doesn't mean you don't love your kid. I feel you're right about OP's wife and that she heard about him having gender disappointment and deemed that meant he didn't love his son. It's almost like she doesn't even love him and never got over it, so now she takes it out on the son. I feel bad for this kid having to deal with such emotional trauma in his formative years.